one of the terror related offenses is conspiracy to murder at the direction of the Islamic State. Uh, he's also been charged with aggravated assault for something that uh, happened outside of the country, ostensibly hacking at a crucified prisoner with a sword. I suspect it probably should be murder, but I guess the problem is they can't prove maybe who the victim is and uh, whether or not he died, although I'm pretty sure he did. So those two end up coming to Canada through our immigration system, which the liberals were in charge of. Then the elder Eldidi gets his citizenship. Well, that's a great way to sponsor all your other terror apologists or actual terrorists in your family to come to Canada through this family sponsorship program. So I'm sure that there's a whole host of LDDs in this country. And so the liberals uh, are sort of on the hot seat for this, as they should be. Uh, the House of Commons uh, SECU, that's a Security and Public Safety Committee, has convened uh, in a sort of, it's not unprecedented, but unusual summer sitting to do their best to pass a motion to recall the immigration minister and the public safety minister to testify at the House of Commons about why this happened. Because the entirety of this, outside of the ISIS video that was filmed in July outside of the country, every aspect of this up until the arrest happened on the Liberals' watch. And by the way, that terror attack very well could have happened save for the fact that French officials tipped the Canadians off to what was happening. So I think the elder Aldidi had been outside of the country uh, in France, and I think French officials got information about a terror attack that was being planned in Canada by him. So they tipped off the Canadians. Had they not done that, it very likely would have happened. So uh, the Liberals, they know who the bad guy is, though. It's Stephen Harper, who has not been in charge of anything in nine plus years. So Jennifer O'Connell, she is, I, I think, just sent to these committees, like she sits on these committees just to annoy the living daylights out of anybody with a couple of brain cells to rub together. Uh, she blamed Stephen Harper's cuts from nine years ago to uh, the CBSA, so that's the Canada Border Services Agency. Take a listen to this nonsense. And in fact, I am very pleased to see the Conservatives finally realize that their cuts have consequences. And previously under the Harper government, when they cut more than a thousand CBSA employees, um, at the time, the president of the Customs and Immigration Union said, quote, there will be little and in some cases, potentially no investigating or surveillance being done to keep these criminals out of the country and out of our communities. Fortin also said, if the government doesn't change the course and withdraw its plan to implement these cuts, the federal government will be putting the national security and public safety of our communities at risk, end quote. This is precisely why we have been making reinvestments to staff up CBSA to deal with the previous conservative cuts. And it's exactly why we continue to make investments through the budget, through the fall economic statement, which conservatives voted against. So we look forward to having these meetings so conservatives can truly appreciate that their cuts have consequences to our national security and the safety of our communities. So we are very supportive of these amendments and having that conversation. Thanks. I don't know if she is that stupid or if she's just faking or if that woman will read whatever piece of paper is put in front of her. The liberals have been in charge for nine years. They're blaming Stephen Harper's cuts to the CBSA that occurred in 2014. They've had nine years to fix whatever they thought Stephen Harper did, but let's just point out the facts. Marty Belanger on Twitter, so that's Marty up north, um, he 
pointed it out and I thought, great research on this. Where are the conservatives to do this sort of research? Marty doesn't work for the conservative party, um, but they've got researchers and they should be pointing this stuff out every time a liberal trots out the specter of the ghost of Stephen Harper uh, as the culprit for their failures. The liberals did not substantially increase the CBSA budget from Harper's so-called cuts in 2014. They didn't substantially increase it in 2015. It basically remained the same. They did not substantially increase it in 2016. Again, stagnant funding at the CBSA. So if they thought it was a problem, why didn't they do anything about it? gets worse though. In 2017, in 2017, the Liberals cut the budget. So they're blaming Stephen Harper's cuts, but actually they cut it from, from, uh, they had the CBSA budget lower than Stephen Harper's funding. And then throw into the mix, I think it was the 2018 tweet from Justin Trudeau, that welcome to Canada tweet when he thought he was going to be so cool and troll Donald Trump because Donald Trump uh, imposed uh, an immigration ban on, I think it was five failed states uh, where you couldn't verify somebody's identity on their passport if indeed these countries even issued passports. That was the state of affairs. Trudeau tweeted out, welcome to Canada. To those fleeing persecution, terror, and war, Can Canadians will welcome you regardless of your faith. Diversity is our strength. Welcome to Canada. So, oh, sorry, that's 2017. So that is the year that Justin Trudeau cut the budget. Now, Justin Trudeau's Welcome to Canada tweet caused a near collapse in our border screening because of the influx of illegal migration. Now to get uh, an immigration review board hearing, it is years worth of wait. So you come into Canada, you used to have to do it at Roxham Road, now they'll let you do it at an airport. The Liberals said they, uh, they closed Roxham Road. Yeah, but they also said you could just instead of claiming refugee status at an illegal point of crossing or irregular point of crossing, you could just do it at Pearson. <laughs> so we just cut out the middleman, I guess. We took the human traffickers out of the equation from upstate New York. And so it caused such a, an influx that now it is years long after you make your uh, asylum claim and we just let you go into the country. Heck, we'll even put you up in a hotel in Niagara Falls or some touristy place like that, I started thinking about back in 2015 when Stephen Harper, he wasn't an oracle. He did not have a crystal ball. The man had a crystal mind. And he was uh, bringing in a piece of legislation called Bill C-24. And what C-24 would do was address exactly this problem. So if you were a dual citizen, which is a good thing because if we do this to people, it doesn't leave them countryless. You just go to your other country. If you are a dual citizen, so this is normally people who migrate to Canada and then maintain their previous citizenship, Lebanon, Syria, wherever, and get charged and convicted of a terror-related offense, we will strip you of your Canadian citizenship. So you might go to jail here. You or we might just deport you, but the chances are you're going to go to jail here, do your time, and then we kick you out of the country. You don't get to be a Canadian citizen, and you don't get to use our citizenship to sponsor the rest of your terror-loving families into our country. So the Liberals straight up did not like C-24. Um, we've got uh, Justin Trudeau from a town hall. This is was a leaked recording from the town hall. There's no video, but I dug it up and I remember the firestorm it caused at, at the time because I'm old and I've been around politics a very long time. Listen to what Justin Trudeau has to say about who should be able to keep their Canadian citizenship, which is a privilege for somebody not born here and not a right. Listen. Uh, since 1947, when the Mackenzie King government passed her first citizenship act, there was a promise to new Canadians that they could be full citizens. And it's been taken away in this. 
the idea of actually removing citizens and deporting somebody who might have been born here but happens to hold dual citizenship is absolutely disgusting. Yep. Well, what Thank are your you. views on it? Yes, yes. Uh, C24, uh, <laughs> it's the bill that, for me, exemplifies the conservatives' approach to politics. Because what they get to say with the Liberal Party's staunch opposition to C24, because we absolutely and thoroughly oppose it, is that, and I'll give you the quote, so you guys can jot it down and put it in an attack ad somewhere, that uh, the Liberal Party believes that terrorists should get to keep their Canadian citizenship. Because I do. <laughs> and I'm willing to take on anyone who disagrees with that. Because the question is, as soon as you make citizenship for some Canadians conditional on good behavior, you devalue citizenship for everyone. A Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. I mean, personally, I'm envious of new Canadians because I have no merit in being Canadian. It was an accident of birth. I got to be born here, and that's, yeah, that's just what I am. New Canadians got to choose Canada. You got to choose to come to this country, or your parents chose to come to this country. And that's a very powerful statement. And the idea that we would say that we'll give you your citizenship, but for the rest of your life, you have to be on your best behavior. Now, yeah. you can say, yeah. best behavior, <laughs> fine. You get a traffic ticket. Yeah, yeah. If we give you your citizenship, something you are not entitled to, you do. I think you should have to behave yourself. Perhaps you should not be using the privilege of being a Canadian citizen to plot terror attacks against your fellow Canadians.